All right, so the highly anticipated Obi-Wan Kenobi show came out, and unsurprisingly, it's pretty disappointing. The first episode was boring, and the second was just bad. Once again, we have people's favorite characters suddenly having personality changes just because they got a few years older. Makes no fucking sense, but here we are. All right, so let's just get into it. So to start the show, we get a four-minute montage of the prequels. Not really sure who's watching the Obi-Wan Kenobi show that hasn't watched the prequels, but whatever. This definitely gives me vibes of, please remember the stuff that you used to like. And they start with Order 66, which also makes me have that feeling. And I'm sure one of these little kids in the Order 66 scene will be Reva, the Inquisitor chick. The choreography for Order 66 is shit. All the stormtroopers literally run right up to the Jedi that we're following, and all she has is a sword, and all they have is guns. None of the kids get shot. And then it cuts, and we find out that it's been 10 years since Order 66. So the Inquisitors land a ship right in the middle of the town and walk around with no lightsabers, which is kind of strange for what seems like it's supposed to be a hostile place where no one likes them in the Outer Rim. The Grand Inquisitor walks into a bar. He does this big monologue about the bartender hiding Jedi. Reva gets bored with his monologue and throws a knife at the guy and it gets stopped by the Force. So she lured the Jedi out. Reva tries to kill the Jedi when the Grand Inquisitor had ordered them to capture him. So he stops her and the Jedi gets away. And pretty much from this point on, I'm not sure why Reva is even allowed to be with them if she's this unstable and doesn't listen to shit. Like, I know they're not officially military, but they kind of have a hierarchy that she's just ignoring. The Jedi are clearly not a threat, and they say as much in the show. So she's just running wild, disobeying orders to be an asshole, and they just let her. We get some exposition about her obsession with Obi-Wan and how they're tired of it. We cut to Obi-Wan, who's working as a scavenger at some meat-cutting place. And we see some shit so that we know that Obi-Wan isn't the same... A guy gets ripped off for his day of work and Obi-Wan doesn't say shit. And then he rides a camel and an alien camel to his cave. And the way the show is shot really makes me feel like they just wanted to do a movie. And then they had to stretch it into six episodes. Because it's just really slow with these long drawn out shots of him just walking and stuff. Like completely unnecessary. So Ajawa is giving him parts, and he has nightmares about the prequels. The Jedi who got away from the Inquisitors earlier shows up, and Obi-Wan says that he's not Obi-Wan, he says he's Ben. And he tells him to go bury his lightsaber and live a normal life, that the Jedi are done. So, in case you didn't get it the first time, Obi-Wan is a bitter old piece of shit. And I'm just so sick of this shit in Disney Star Wars. Like, The writers seem to think that as you get old, you just become a complete fucking asshole, regardless of what your personality used to be like. This is the same arc that Luke had, where we see him in episode six, and he's, you know, the savior hero, like dedicated to the Jedi and super positive. And the next time we see him, he's a fucking bitter old coward. Han, who became a general within the rebellion and kind of like a respectable person and clearly, you know, cared about Leia. Turn into a deadbeat dad. So, fuck these people. They just keep taking the characters everyone liked, making their character the opposite with no explanation, and it's just dog shit. Alright, so we go to Alderaan. We see young Leia. She's supposed to be smart and rambunctious, and we get to see that she's being watched by somebody in the woods where she likes to go run around. We cut back to Scavenger Obi-Wan, and Owen tells Ben that Luke doesn't need anything from him. He just needs to be with his family. And this is where the the line of the like you trained his father from Owen comes in. And they make Obi-Wan look really pathetic here. Like he regrets being a Jedi or something. And the Inquisitors show up again. And Reva cuts off a lady's hand who complains. And then she interrogates Owen. And Owen refuses to back down. And then some rare Inquisitor tells her to knock it off. Not really sure why he cares if she cuts down some asshole civilians in the Outer Rim, but whatever. Especially where they think they're hiding Jedi. So we go back to Alderaan, and Bail Organa wants to end slavery and stuff, but the other politicians don't want to. Leia's cousin calls her dumb for thinking that droids are equal to humans, and makes fun of her for being adopted. And she does like a psychoanalysis of him, and she sounds like a 40-year-old psychologist. Not like a 10-year-old kid. And then he cries. 
We get a nice moment right after this where Bale tells Leia that she is a real Organa, and then she runs outside again like she wasn't supposed to. And there we get the three kidnappers waiting for her. And to me, this is the kind of shit that just is where we start getting the real stupidity. She's 10 years old, and she runs away from these three kidnappers who are bounty hunters. And she must be the fastest 10-year-old ever to not get caught by adults. Like, it makes your bad guys really fucking imposing when you have three adult bad guys who can't catch a little girl. Not to mention, why does the guy talk to her and not just snatch her right away? I can only assume that whoever wrote this shit has literally never seen or interacted with a human child. And it was just created in a fucking clone laboratory somewhere. So they've only ever been around adults. And if you've seen a fucking 10 year old before, you know how dumb this scene is. So Bale calls Obi-Wan and asks him to save Leia. He says no. So in case it wasn't clear the first couple times, Obi-Wan is a piece of shit. Obi-Wan goes back to his meat cutting and the Jedi that he wouldn't help is strung up in the town. Bale shows up to Obi-Wan's cave. Somehow, now they have a lead, even though he explicitly said they didn't before. Obi-Wan agrees and goes to a random spot in the desert where his lightsaber's buried. No fucking clue how he knows where it is. He just rides out in the middle of the desert with a camel. After, I'm assuming, 10 years, and just knows exactly where it is. Like fucking dunes don't move around and shit. And even if they didn't, how would he remember the exact spot? In the middle of nothing. One of the kidnappers complains that it's a bad idea to kidnap. A bit fucking late for that complaint. Reva ordered the kidnapping to lure Obi-Wan out. How does she know who Leia is? How does she know about Obi-Wan's connection to her? Who the hell knows? And we actually find out in episode 2 that she knows a lot more shit. That I don't really know how she knows. So the only people that should have known this were Maru, Owen, the Organas, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. No fucking clue how she knows. And that's it for episode one. This shit dragged on forever. I summed up in about five minutes what took them 45 minutes to do on screen. It's really like these long drawn out shots and just nothing happening. And the Inquisitors look okay, I guess. It kind of seems like they were lazy with it. I guess the main Inquisitor guy, he's not a bad actor. I just wish they would have contoured his face a little bit and made him look a little bit more, you know, elongated like he should. The chick who plays Reva, this is the first time that I've seen her, but she and the other Inquisitors are kind of like cartoonish bad guys. Like they're just always angry and always yelling and they're supposed to be intimidating. Just doesn't really work for me. Okay, so let's go into episode two where it gets way fucking worse. Episode two starts on this other world and we see Obi-Wan. I guess he was able to track the ship there immediately. So I have no clue why it absolutely had to be Obi-Wan that goes after Leia, but whatever. He talks to some kid on the street who sends him to the Indian dude from the Eternals, who's clearly a con man. Not sure what kind of security he has for a con man when Obi-Wan just walks in and holds him up at gunpoint, but whatever. He tells Obi-Wan to go to some VIP place, and Obi-Wan just immediately trusts him. Don't know why. Obi-Wan goes to the spice lab and beats up some guys in a hand-to-hand fight, and then he hurts himself. He thinks he finds Leia, but it's a trap by the kidnappers. They sneak up on him and steal his lightsaber. Even the kidnappers are saying that they're surprised that he fell for it. Like, just calling him stupid. So, Reva is on her way, and somehow Obi-Wan gets a hand free. I'm not really sure because they had him pinned up against the wall. And he throws down a spice thing, and then he has a mask on out of nowhere. Luckily, the kidnappers had her, like, two rooms down. I'm not sure why the fuck they would do that when the whole point was just to lure Obi-Wan. They didn't even want Leia. Again, makes no sense, but whatever. The Grand Inquisitor shows up and is mad. And he calls Reva a loser and like gutter trash and stuff. And they trade petty insults. It's really weird. He locks down the city and says that he's going to take the credit for himself. Reva puts out a bounty on Obi-Wan. Kind of surprised at how well this works considering that he's been in hiding for 10 years. But I guess luckily for them, Ewan McGregor hasn't really aged that much, so it kind of works for the story. And this is where the show starts to get really fucking stupid. So Leia keeps trying to run off and do stuff after she was just kidnapped and just rescued. Like, you've already shown that she's supposed to be a smart kid. She just got fucking kidnapped, and then she just tries to run off again, which is what got her kidnapped in the first place. In this crowded ass city, full of scumbags. Makes no sense. So she's running around the middle of this crowded city saying, make me float and use your lightsaber, just openly shouting about him being a fucking Jedi. Again, she's a genius when insulting her cousin to make him cry, but now she's a normal 10-year-old. Ben says, how old are you? Because she starts talking like an adult again. 
after all the stupidity she just showed. And this is also a retarded line from Obi-Wan. Like, I get that they're going for, like, fun quips, but he was literally at her birth and keeping an eye on Luke. Like, he knows how fucking old they are. They have calendars on Tatooine, I'm sure. So the Grand Inquisitor says he wants a garrison there within the hour. I guess they can just teleport now. I don't fucking know. He finds out about the bounty hunters and is mad at Reva. And she's staying on the top of a building and they're clearly going for like this Batman look. Which it just looks like shitty Batman. So whatever. So Leia gets mad at Obi-Wan because they kidnapped her to lure him out. I'm not sure how she even figured this out. But she can't figure out how to stop running around in a crowded ass city full of bounty hunters and shit. After she was just kidnapped. So she runs off after this tantrum and bounty hunters grab her, unsurprisingly. Obi-Wan shoots him, and then she runs away to a ladder and gets on a rooftop. And this is where the show just fucking falls off a cliff for me. Obi-Wan chases her across the rooftops, and a bounty hunter is on the roof, and him and Obi-Wan have a shootout, and Leia's stuck because there's a gap now that she can't jump across. Reva sees this from her rooftop across the city where she's perched like Batman, and then she starts running over there and is doing like parkour to get there and it's so fucking unnecessary and just cheesy looking and stupid like we've seen the jedi jump in the movies all over the place you don't need to do like dumbass parkour shit to get around so more bounty hunters show up to the roof and the shootout keeps going we keep cutting to reva running and she's like sideways running on walls and does a backflip for no reason it's fucking awful there's a gap that Leia can't jump across, and they're like 20 stories up from the ground, so they're really high. So obviously, she jumps down like 30 feet and catches herself on some kind of cable or clothesline or something with one hand. Completely fucking retarded. So she hangs there by one arm, and Obi-Wan's yelling for her. And I guess that they just fucking forgot to put in blaster fire and stuff, because everyone just stopped shooting. Like, the firefight's just over. They just took their guns and went home. No clue how they didn't catch this. So Leia falls, and Obi-Wan catches her right before she hits the ground. And by the time she sits up, he's coming around the corner. Like, he just teleported down 20 floors, and the fighting just ended in like half a second. No fucking clue. I actually had to keep rewinding this, because I thought I missed something. So the con artist man shows up from before, and shoots an assassin droid before he shoots Obi-Wan. Before the droid shoots Obi-Wan. He offers him a ship for free. No clue how this guy went from being a con man scam artist to the helping hero off screen in like half an hour in the time of this world. The Grand Inquisitor interrogates the kidnappers that Reva hired. Reva is still running somehow. She couldn't catch up. And con artist man shows up to stop her. And he essentially sacrifices himself. Again, why did he become heroic in like five minutes? Plot needs it, I guess. She tortures him, and instead of killing him like she does everyone else, or wants to do with everyone else, she just reads his mind with the Force. But as she's torturing him, he keeps like making jokes and shit. And it's like, do you not understand how to make your villains scary? It's okay for a scene to be completely serious with no jokes, and for him to be afraid of her. Like, remember when Han gets tortured in episode 5, and all we hear is him screaming? Even something like that, I think, would have worked here. And also, if literal mind reading is a part of the Force now, what implication does that have on the rest of the universe? Like, remember when Darth Vader questioned Leia because he couldn't just rip her thoughts out of her head? And all the other times that the Jedi and Sith don't literally know everything about someone? It just makes no fucking sense. And it's not very well thought out about the implications or ramifications for the rest of the universe. So we cut to 10-year-old Leia bossing Obi-Wan around, and he's just a complete loser now, so he listens to her and just takes it. Reva shows up and acts like a B-level horror movie villain, going, Obi-Wan, over and over. Like, can't she just read his fucking mind and know exactly where he is? Anyway, he pulls his lightsaber out, and he hides, and he sends Leia to the ship that luckily the con artist man wasn't lying about. She does the, your fear has betrayed you, which is obviously a Darth Vader's line. And her delivery is not fucking James Earl Jones. So it's just terrible. Them just yanking everything they can out of the nostalgia, making it shittier. And that just kind of fucking sums up Disney Star Wars to me. So I guess she can read Obi-Wan's mind, but not where he is or something. I don't fucking know. Because she mentions Darth Vader looking forward to their reunion. 
And she goes, oh, you didn't know Anakin was still alive? And like, I guess this is how Obi-Wan finds out. This is super fucking lame. So the Grand Inquisitor shows up and says, stand down so he can catch Obi-Wan. And she stabs him in the chest. And, you know, if he's dead, then they just shit on the first season of Rebels. And if he's not dead, then it's just cheesy as fuck that he got a lightsaber through the chest and didn't die. So either way, this is fucking bad. I don't even really care what they do with it afterward. I know people survive all kinds of shit in Star Wars. Like, it doesn't make the stuff with Darth Maul any less fucking dumb either. Of him being cut in half and then falling to a planet and having robot legs and shit. I mean, it's okay to have people fucking die in your universe. And then after she kills him, she goes, Who's in the gutter now? Great fucking one-liner. Great death for the Grand Inquisitor. Fuck you. Obi-Wan uses this to escape, and she throws a tantrum. This is where you get that line from the trailer where she's like, You can't escape him. Ah. So Obi-Wan literally doesn't want to do anything, and then hides like a pussy instead of pulling out his lightsaber. I'm so glad they brought Ewan McGregor back for this. We get a cut to Vader in a back to tank, and all the Star Wars simps just fucking come in their pants from hearing Darth Vader breathe. And that's the end of the episode. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, the first episode was just really boring, and the action that was in it was shit. And then the second episode was just shit the entire time. Like, it just got worse the longer the episode went on. I don't really know where the story's going to go from here, since they resolved this kidnapping arc in 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm expecting Reva to somehow still be a Jedi, or maybe they'll do like a knockoff version of Vader's arc from the original... Where she has a chance to kill Luke or something and then doesn't. I don't know. Uh, I'm really not looking forward to it. This is six episodes. It seems to me like they really wanted to do a movie. And now they had to stretch out, stretch it out to six episodes. And maybe add some filler and shit. They've made Obi-Wan so fucking lame. It's okay for him to give up being a Jedi. But he should still be a decent person. Like He shouldn't just turn to some bitter old piece of shit. So yeah, that's it for episode one and two. See ya.